a very good one to one and all. First, let me quote the famous lines of Sri Mahakavi Vangatun, Mother Tongue. Matula Bhashagal Kevalam Thatrimar, Martiva Petimatan Bhashadan, which means other languages are but first to mothers. A man's birth mother is his own language. It's true, right? On July 29, 2020, the Women's Cabinet approved a new national education policy after 34 years' gap. Previously, it was known as National Policy on Education, NPE. It was approved in 1986. The main focus of the 1986 policy was regarding the access and equity of education. Access means availability of education, and equity means fairness. Because there are people who have moved in surroundings, but other than it comes to having access to education. We have indeed come a long way since 1986. However, today its major focus is on important quality education. The main purpose of MP in 2020 is to design a vision and framework for the both school education and higher education sector in India. As part of NEP 2020, BUK, in association with AICTE, took initiative in translation of first year undergraduate and diploma engineering courses technical books into Malayalam language. So, on behalf of the University Kerala, I extend my heartfelt greetings to the respected dignitaries and participants from various colleges who have joined us today. We are honored to have you all in this one day orientation program on technical book translation conducted by the UK in association with AICTE as part of implementing the National Education Policy 2020 in the higher education sector. So let us begin this program by invoking the blessings of God Almighty. I invite Indraja to please lead us in prayer. Over to Indraja. Deva, Deva, I invite Dr. Elizabeth Shirley, the coordinator of this program, to uh, welcome the gathering. Yes, uh, good morning, and I welcome all of you. Uh, uh, this uh, actually the Digital University of Kerala and the ACT jointly organized this workshop uh, for translation of the books. Uh, so you all you know that the first year undergraduates and uh, uh, diploma courses. Uh, we have identified uh, 20 subjects and uh, for this 20 subjects we have translators and reviewers. So there are 20 translators and 20 reviewers we identified and uh, so the, you all are the uh, participants are the uh, translators and reviewers uh, for uh, uh, this uh, task. And uh, so ACT has uh, interested uh, DC University Kerala uh, for the translation of these books. And uh, for the different subjects we have assigned there, uh, that includes, uh, you know, that basic subjects like uh, mathematics, chemistry, physics, and then most of the engineering first year subjects there also we have mathematics, uh, physics, chemistry, or applied chemistry, or applied mathematics, uh, and the engineering subjects, including graphics and uh, electromagnetic theory, etc. 
So this uh, come before coming to the my role as a uh, giving welcome to all of you and also the dictators present here. Uh, I just wanted to give a, a very short about this uh, program. Uh, even uh, when you have translation, as you have to do translation from English to Malayalam. Uh, so uh, this has uh, uh, our uh, you know MC has already been undertold. So the NEP has co also come up with the, this uh, to provide education in the regional languages. Uh, uh, well, uh, so this will actually uh, you know give a lot of uh, you know. Uh, uh, knowledge and also to understand the basic concepts uh, of the subjects in that. In fact, uh, many of them have got an anxiety that uh, so whether we need to teach uh, in, English, in Malayalam to the students and also students have to learn all the Malayalam words. So, so how do they you know, go for the, you know, any other uh, higher education or somewhere else they go, how do you understand the English or their that words? But uh, the translation, uh, what exactly it meant is that uh, it is not, it just gives us a supplementary to the English books that we already have been uh, there. Uh, but the uh, many of the students, even they use that they can understand the uh, English or the some of the technical aspects of the, uh, you know, uh, concepts in that. So this is merely to, you know, or uh, give them a more conceptual and fundamental understanding of the subjects uh, and uh, also they can, uh, uh, you know, do much, much better than uh, what we have uh, learned it earlier. Uh, uh, so when we come to the, you know, glossary or the terminologies or the technical words that it comes, for example, uh, those are using mathematics, we have triangle or we have calculus, uh, many English words are said. So we are very much familiar with that words, not with the, or a, a, you know, accelerator or a theory that or something like that. Uh, so nobody can, even a Malayali, nobody can understand that. So uh, so what we do is that uh, we have a transliteration also. Uh, you can use the transliteration of that technical words uh, so, so that that English word also be uh, preserved and retained there. Uh, so how we go ahead with the whole translation process, we have representatives from ACT, they can talk much, much better than me. But uh, as, a, you know, some experience in, uh, uh, you know, machine translation and natural language processing research work, as well as, you know, coordinating some of the central government projects, uh, which includes a language technology, uh, I have done some, uh, you know, work on translation. Uh, not from English to Malayalam, but from uh, Hindi to Malayalam and uh, uh, Malayalam to Tamil. But compared to the all other languages, maybe 22 official languages we have, uh, one of the most difficult tasks, most of you may be knowing that, translation of uh, Malayalam because of the many reasons in that. Uh, one of the, I mean, uh, I just thought of having a separate session on issues on Malayalam, but uh, maybe for the later step, I can I can spend more time on that. So uh, Malayalam actually it is a free oral language, and uh, English we call it as a, a SV or SV all language because that is subject verb and the object. Uh, whereas Malayalam, it is a subject object and the verb. So a simple translation, if you do it like that. But what I say that uh, uh, John, you know, studied, uh, so John is studying English. So John is a subject, studying is a verb, and English is the object. So how do we translate that? Hmm? John, English, where does that English come? It comes in the middle. So you are seeing simple sentence, the order is changing. And so this will affect the structure of the, so when we translate the structure of the language also. So when we translate it, the most important thing that we need to look at is the structure of the language. So can we, you know, translate the word by word? So if you do like that, it will be like this. So if you do word by word, so that it will be a different kind of, uh, you know, sentence, you get it. So that is one of the, and also, you know, Malayalam is, we call it as a highly agglutinative and a highly inflectional language. What do you mean by agglutinative language? So there are, because if I say a word like what I say, uh, you cannot see any such long words in any other languages. So if you split it like that word, 
പഠിച്ച് ഇരിക്കു കൊണ്ട് ആയി ഇരുന്നു and if you then again concatenate that there will be a mix of words so you have to do a kind of a different kind of a arrangement for a concatenate the word and also for splitting the words so that is why malayalam is known as a really agglutinative language and high inflection means there are a lot of inflection there in the verb or the verb also that is highest some, somewhere in the highest side of malayalam about 2000 inflectional verbs are there just like noun also so it's some one simple example i just say that raman and sita how do you translate into malayalam raman and sita you so that itself is changed it. so you can see a lot of lot of differences when you when you translate from a english to malayalam uh, so especially so when we go go for an automatic translation uh, so this all things need to be taken care so that there are a lot of process involved in that anyway that is not your job uh, so we are providing a semi automated translated material to you but comparing to the, those ambiguities and the issues and difficulties it may not be as much accurate as we expect so many other languages you know that many of the indian languages and foreign languages there are question translation is one of the hot area and uh, uh, as you know that uh, many of the indian languages if you if you take it uh, there are about 60 to 70 percentage accuracy we have but in malayalam it is still less than 50 percentage so you can't expect a, 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 a moder- moderately good translated Uh, you know uh, malayalam when you from the from the automated uh, any tools you use it uh, so thank you uh, dr ganesh uh, from iit bombay so they have the use they have the, their own tool and uh, you will be providing that tool so, so i will explain more about that and he will also be giving a lecture how to do the translation uh, in this process etc so uh, and uh, this uh, there are a lot of issues and also words if you take it uh, you know namaka so we know that nan artham Uh, and also some of the words you write so adhyapakan if you write it how do you write so there is like that da and tha so if you write da with the combination of the adhya it is correct even if you write only tha with that that is also correct so there are lot of uh, you know lot of issues there and we are trying to you know uh, to resolve many of this uh, uh, problems by only thing what we can do is that we have to take case by case and the uh, Uh, do the necessary programming or a corrections in that and also malayalam if you do any of the tools even the if you use word or anything like that there are a lot of rendering issues i think all of you may be knowing about what we what do you mean by rendering issue so especially when you have chilla shadangal in in or when you translate it it will give you some you put it give you some you know small square like that uh, so nowadays i mean uh, it has more improved it Uh, thanks to google assistant the uh, google translation also uh, even just uh, uh, one year before if you give a simple malayalam sentence to google translator uh, it it gives a very funny result but now it is changed a lot uh, you can expect a moderately good translator from the google translation also so uh, this is the situation but uh, you don't need to worry about uh, the automatic uh, auto, the tram- machine translation part of that uh, but when you was why i am trying to convey is that when we translate when we have a malayalam translator semi translator you you will have all these issues so uh, so we need to do a ma- kind of manual translation but you have a tool you have all the things set and uh, if you have a picture or an equations or anything that will also automatically you get it so you don't no need to do all this kind of thing but only the sentences you need to correct it so that is all process you have to do more about that uh, you learn uh, in this uh, workshop so coming to uh, my uh, uh, role a uh, welcome speech i would uh, like to uh, welcome our uh, honorable vice chancellor of a digital university kerala honorable uh, you know uh, dr sanji kobinas he will be joining very soon with us so he is always he is the one who started initiated this work and uh, Uh, with you doctor uh, talked with amit and all then uh, he has hand over this work to me and that is why i have taken so um, uh, i welcome uh, on behalf of uh, uh, the duke uh, all of us uh, to the to this uh, workshop he will be joining soon and uh, today we have a uh, doctor achish shankar asnair achish shankar asnair is the 
head of the you know department of uh, bioinformatics in the university of kerala so uh, why we have invited dr achishankar sir rather than a well known professor uh, he is a well known writer author orator except some of you are knowing him uh, very well uh, so he has written a lot of books that books in groups technical books novels stories and uh, uh, you know books for uh, kids and he has done a lot of translation also he is a well versed person in this and uh, he will we have invited him for the inauguration of uh, uh, this workshop and uh, welcome uh, dr achu achu will be joining uh, online uh, if i online in online okay. already thank you okay thank you uh, today uh, we have dr amit srivastava uh, so he is in fact the uh, you know anchor of all this program and he is the director of uh, all india from uh, aict he is mostly looking in the faculty development programs uh, he has got a very well versed experiences from uh, iim ahmedabad and also he has worked it in uh, governance and project audit program coordinator for the policy analysis etc uh, very experienced uh, with a demonstrative history of uh, working in education management and uh, thank you and also welcome uh, dr amit uh, and also you, you have put uh, he has got a Uh, another meeting in Belakno tomorrow. So, in spite of all this busy schedule, like he has uh, uh, arranged to come here and uh, deliver a lecture and also to give a guidelines for the whole program. Uh, we have a uh, professor uh, Rajiv Kumar. Uh, he is a member secretary from um, AUCT. Uh, he uh, is also on online. He is a professor uh, and uh, he did his education uh, from IIT Delhi and uh, he was from. Um, Uh, you know dcr university of science and technology haryana uh, so his areas of interest is also more of a is a computer science person mathematical uh, com computational sciences uh, software engineering and also he has done uh, some work in the machine translation like that uh, thank you sir and welcome you for uh, this uh, uh, event and that sir is available in, uh, online uh, so in the afternoon professor ganesh ramakrishnan from iit mumbai will be joining so we will be using Uh, his uh, uh, two and his team members will be uh, joining soon with physically with us, but I think uh, Ganesh should be available in uh, online. So he will also give you the experiences and also how to do the translation with the tool that we have. So, uh, so now mm, not. Uh, okay, so now coming to the participants. so uh, first of all i uh, thank you for your interest uh, in uh, not only for uh, doing the translation work uh, but to the help the education community uh, by learning it in their own languages uh, your uh, you know uh, contributions will be highly valued for this and uh, and only thing is that uh, as uh, you know this is a, uh, we need to complete this work in a short period of time so you be getting only two months and the review then we have to give it for a review for the next one month so acd has already we, they have given this work to the dicha university with the promise that we will coordinate the work by uh, by completing this work in uh, three months so we will uh, try our best to uh, uh, do justice to our work and uh, welcome all the participants and uh, also welcome all the duk staff the project staff uh, with me uh, and uh, all the you know uh, faculty members uh, uh, for dicha university for uh, encouraging this work thank you very much and uh, thank you ma'am for your warm welcome for the inaugural address on the special occasion i'm honored to invite dr achushankar ismaya professor and head department of computational biology and bioinformatics university of kerala uh, as ma'am said Uh, he is actually a professor of computer science in the city of Kerala. He is heading the department of computational biology and bioinformatics, and he got educated in, from CET, IIT Bombay, University of Cambridge, and University of Kerala. And he is holding two PhDs, one in engineering and one in music. And he is a teacher and visiting professor in various institutions, both within India and abroad. And uh, he led various IT development projects as the director of CIDIT Government of Kerala for three years. And overall, he is the author of fifteen more than fifteen books in English and Malayalam, including a number of Tarippo, a number of scholarly articles, and a large number of research publications under his name. So, I am very happy to be with you, sir. Over to you, sir. You will be joining in online. Very good morning to all of you. I am very happy to address you. I'm sitting beside 
or beneath a tree and <laughs> amidst another uh, meeting that is going on which i have taken a leave and uh, addressing you online i would have you can all hear me am i audible and am i visible yes you are not visible not visible okay just a minute can you see me now I'm full and audible, I suppose. Yeah. Am I? Please confirm. I cannot not hear it. Maybe some hand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible and yeah. also visible. You are audible okay. and visible, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I am uh, in another meeting. I just took leave from the meeting and I'm sitting outside oh, beneath sir. a tree. And... Uh, i cannot see all the participants to know you know what age group they are or whether there are people who may know so i am very happy to take part in this meeting i myself would have wished to be a translator if time permitted and my academic duties were not so uh, tough uh, translation is something which is very challenging and exciting at the same time if i had a chance to uh, advise on how this workshop would should go ahead i would say that a uh, couple of, if it is a video or if it is a written matter, you know, some part of it needs to be distributed to all the participants, same content. And they all translate it and they sit in groups and compare what they did so that their mind is agitated on this particular aspect of translation. And then the further discussions become very relevant and meaningful uh, rather than, you know, not entering into the translation and listening about expert's opinion it would be nice that you jump into translation a little bit have a discussion among the uh, participants and then listen to people who are experts i am no expert but uh, i have a uh, lot of experience in writing science and technology in malayalam as i was introduced it was mentioned from 1989 onwards i have written books on technology in malayalam you know starting with basic electronics to my last technological book was on uh, programming in Java. Uh, so I think I have a exposure to uh, writing technical material in Malayalam. So I would just like to share that those ideas with you. However, I'm not aware of what methodology you're using. I'm hearing Dr. Shirley, Professor Elizabeth Shirley mentioning use of some tools. Uh, I think the finishing touch has to be human. Uh, these tools can make it make things faster, but the finishing touch has to come from the uh, your your mind. Um, some of the things that uh, uh, are I think should be taken as uh, settled is that we don't translate technical words; uh, they will only cause uh, pain. Uh, when I was in school, I was uh, I was a victim of this. I studied in the local language. Uh, and, you know, we, we were told very heavy Sanskrit words for velocity, acceleration and all that. And even for resistor, the word that was taught was Pradirodhakam. It's a Sanskrit word. So, but practically what it means is you go to an electronics shop and you ask for a Pradirodhakam, I think he, he, he will slap you. He might read it as uh, uh, something uh, fishy. Uh, so, I mean, I, I have nothing against Sanskrit, but what I'm saying is uh, a word that is commonly being used, you cannot be replacing it with any other language. So I think like words like, this is also a, a culture of a language. Actually in Tamil, uh, translating technical words is not looked upon as funny. For example, uh, computer itself is translated as Kanipuriyu. But in Malayalam, if you translate computer, that would be a matter of, uh, it will be a joke. You know, people don't accept it. That is, this has something to do with the mindset of people and their language aptitude. So in Malayalam, the language aptitude is that don't unnecessarily translate. That is surely the, uh, the attitude. Uh, I think you can test this out yourself. So it is better to leave the heavy technical words as such. Now, if you translate a technical word into Malayalam, and make sure that it is not just a fancy word that satisfies your ego and your interests, but it communicates. 
better than the English word. For example, if you take the word persistence of vision, uh, we could write persistence of vision, but this is not a common word for a Malayali. So the Malayali would not uh, would not have a problem with it being translated. So I translate it as karcha patte, karcha patte. So patte is like sticking on. So you know, so the vision sticking on. So that is a good Malayalam word, and also it does not offend people. You know, they they are not surprised to hear that this is the translation for persistence of vision because persistence of vision is itself a word which is not very common. But word like uh, transistor. Computer, software, you should leave it as it is. Then uh, we also must be aware of this fact that our communication, not only translation, our communication is determined by an unknown person sitting in your mind. Who is sitting in your mind to whom you are speaking? You must be aware of that person. And if you reduce or uh, upgrade that person's capabilities and intelligence, then your translation will change. For example, you know, when I am speaking to you, I cannot see all of you. So my in my mind, the receptive person is not very clear. I don't know who it is. So my communication may not be very effective. But if I am told these are all engineering college teachers, then suddenly my speech changes. So similarly, when you translate, you must have in your mind a student whom you must quiz. What kind of student is going to read this? Uh, a student who may not have good grasp in English is the student who is going to read this, this uh, use this material, use this content. So uh, you need to be very sensitive to that. So if you assume that you have brilliant B.Tech student from upper strata of the society or a brilliant MSc student from the upper strata of the society is using your content, then you know you can be carefree in your translation. But if you think that a student first generation learner from a disadvantaged group is uh, going to use the content, then you have to be very gentle, careful, and be aware of what are the pitfalls of your translation. In any case, I think the government of India for, for a very long time has had norms for uh, the, the technical terminology. I'm sure you are all aware of it. It is up on the web. So one of the very wise things said is that if the word is in great circulation, don't translate. So this is something I, I have also mentioned. Please don't uh, translate very popular technical terms. Then yet another thing is that, uh, do you want to look at a sentence, look at its grammatical structure and then translate? Or do you want to read a sentence, understand what it is trying to convey, then throw away the sentence and say the idea in your own words? So this could be a, this is a choice for you. Perhaps something which is a combination of both of this also could be done. You, you know, you you go for look for word by word translation, and then really relook at uh, a free flowing translation of your own. So these approaches have to be decided on. Uh, I am not very clear if there is a guideline. If there was, I would have commented on it. But let me tell you, uh, translation is a very challenging, rewarding, and creative work. Creative work. It's more difficult than writing, actually. I would say. That's why I said it is challenging, because when you when you write, you, your ideas just flow, and you are not restricted by any requirement to conform to any other ideas, uh, other than conforming to the uh, factuality of the subject. But when you translate, you are trying to reflect on what somebody else has already thought and conceived. The idea is already crystallized. So in that way, it is challenging. And uh, let me also tell you that there must be a sense of beauty. Uh, in, when you write science and technology, people say, well, it, it, it doesn't really matter whether you are writing poetically and all. But um, whether you can you can polish a sentence in a more more uh, aesthetic manner. Uh, I'm, if I had time, I would have, I'm only asked to speak, make an inaugural speech, which is ceremonial. Uh, but otherwise, I would have given you a lot of examples of how such things can be done. Very many examples, which would be illuminating. So keep keep these things in mind. And yet another thing is not to be very sure of your own translation and also be aware of the pitfalls of a single person deciding the translation. So I hear that you have a review, peer review. But even before you go for a peer review by an uh, anonymous agency, I would suggest that, you know, uh, whatever you write, possibly, you know, you can read out to a group of people 
and not only in the workshop you know you can actually go and sit at home and read it to your family members and just see whether they they see that there is a good flow in it so uh, peer review is exceptional of exceptional value in translation uh, and uh, more people look at your document they can actually find out uh, more and more ways of improving it so please use all of this uh, and uh, i would also say after you translate it would be a very good idea to read aloud your translation you know hearing it you know you, you get a better idea of how the translation is good because it's its flow is registered in the ear rather than in the intellect uh, so that also could be tried out so i congratulate triple uh, itmk vice chancellor professor sanjeev gobinath professor uh, elizabeth shirley for taking up this very important work because i fully realize that unless we can at least gradually move towards content in local languages a large part of the our our students would struggle with actually the language not the concepts and the skills but with the language perhaps this is the reason why aict has prioritized this particular project and producing such uh, translated content it would be of great value uh, i have personal experience as director of quality assurance in the kerala university i talked to students who failed uh, you know consistently failed in exams and finally i realized that uh, what they were failing at was english not the, the knowledge of the subject they seem to be quite good at articulating in their mother tongue they are unable to crack the language and let us remember that what we are doing has a anti colonial uh, dimension too you know that modern knowledge can only be expressed in english is a myth which needs to be broken uh it is very well known you know if the political system and the social system support modern knowledge can arise in any language a great example is uh, japan uh, i was a visiting professor in japan long many years ago and when i went there i had great difficulty not many of the professors knew english and the library was full of japanese books even microprocessor books on latest microprocessors were in japanese so i requested the librarian to give me some english books and he said they are all locked down in the um, you know in a room which is not frequently used something like a godown and uh, he said you give me a request i will open it and try to take out some books so there are countries like that but in that country you must know that the whole education system school education you don't have english and japanese there is only japanese and that is the reason why possibly this kind of system has been developed in our school system it is not so so you know there is nothing we can we individuals can do about it hopefully we are able to build the system together not look at japan but have our own model of having students be skillful in both the languages so this will reflect on our translation also as i said we don't need to shun english out of our translation technical words and even some phrases can come from english i think i have spoken more than what a ceremonial speech requires uh, i wish the participants a exciting time and i am sure that this workshop will deliver content which will go a long way in bringing a large number of people who are first generation learners into skill sets that the whole world needs i wish them all success and i thank you for the opportunity to uh, let me address you i uh, with the permission of all of you uh, with the officials from the headquarters aict headquarters i declare this uh, workshop inaugurated thank you very much jai hind thank you mr sir thank you so much it is actually more than an inaugural address actually he has given a lot of suggestions and tips from his own experience uh, thank you once again for your constant support to dk thank you sir now it's time for the participants to come uh, come to friend and uh, briefly explain uh, your uh, self introduction actually you come to friend and uh, just give a brief introduction of yourself please i i i also request you to let me leave i have to be back in the meeting thank you very much sure sir thank you Good morning, everyone. My name is Noble P. Abraham. I am from Martha Ma College, Tiruvalla. I am an assistant professor in physics.
Uh, myself, Dr. Manish Michael from Bhagavad College. I am an assistant professor in physics, and I am here for as a reviewer of the first UG course, Electromagnetic Theory and Lab Manual. Uh, my name is Mugum Thomas. I am coming from Kotem. I was working as an assistant professor in the mechanical department, uh, STSC Tipala. I am Anum Joy from STSC Tipala, working as assistant professor in mechanical department. Good morning, all. My name is Sachin, and I am coming from uh, Karno. And I'm uh, now working as a STEM officer in Calicut University Engineering College. Thank you. Good morning, all. I am Mansoor P, uh, coming from MES College of Engineering, Gutti Pram, uh, Mathematics Department. Myself, my name is Jacob. I'm working as a STEM officer in Mechanical Department, University of Calicut. Thank you. I'm Dr. Nidish Matthew Nidhiri. Coming from St. Joseph College of Engineering, Mechanical Department. Thank you. I'm Dr. Yag Aral, uh, coming from SEM School of Engineering and Technology, working as Professor and Head. I'm Raji Ramachandran from LBS ITW Pujapura. I'm an Assistant Professor in Computer Science and Engineering. Myself, Dhanya Elke, from Marbus Ellis College of Engineering and Technology, Trivandrum, Computer Science Department. Good morning, myself, Vidya, Assistant Professor of Computer Science, Government College, Kairiwata. So, good morning to one and all. I am Dr. Priya from the Department of Computer Science, Government College, Kairiwata. Good morning, all. I am Adriya K, Assistant Professor in the School of Informatics, Digital University, Kerala. Good morning to all. Myself, Dr. Sharanya. I am currently not working anymore. I am recently completed PhD from NIT Calicut. Thank you. I am Mary Samuel. I am working as assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics, Triple IT, Lakhdo. Good morning, all. I am Dr. Jispal. I am working in Sanjay Engineering College, uh, Biomedical Department. Thank you. Good morning, all. I am Rahul Devi. Working as an assistant professor in mathematics department, Universal Engineering College, Pallivattam. Myself, Jayaki Pandani, teaching in Kuriyako Silas College, Mahanwana, Kottayam, as assistant professor in mathematics, MSA Mathematics. Right. Good morning, I am Dr. Vishnu P. Madan Mohan. Electrical Department, Christ College of Engineering, Ringalakoda. Good morning, everybody. I am Anthony Thomas, uh, a retired man. Uh, I am uh, formerly I am a joint director of technical education, government of Kerala, formerly principal college of engineering. Good morning, all. I am KC Jero from ISAT Engineering College, Kalamshiri, Department of Physics. Good Coming from Ashley College, Karen Shady, and the Rural Department of Ash and Sciences and Humanities. Thank you. Good 
Sunday prayer course recently rooted as the um, principal and the uh, department of chemistry in the school. Thank you. Good morning, all. I am Dr. Tesbal Matthew, recently retired as a professor from St. George's College, Ayurvedra. Good morning. I am Dr. Archana Pidas, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Marbasilis College of Engineering, Toronto. Good morning, all. I am Anish Ambas. I am currently working as an assistant professor in mathematics at Marbasilis College, Toronto. Thank you. Good morning, all. Myself, Samasharam Bilai, I am retired as Associate Professor in Statistics, University College of Rwanda. And at present working as uh, visiting faculty at ISA Rwanda and also the UK. Myself, Dr. Bibin Matthew, currently working as an Assistant Professor in Mathematics, Amal Jodhi College of Engineering, Kanyapalli. Good morning. I am Sharon Philip from the Department of Chemistry, St. Thomas College, Palais. Good morning, all. Myself, Feshmi Jadevan, and I am working as an assistant professor in mechanical engineering, LBS ITW, Ujapura, Trivandrum. Good morning, all. Uh, I am Suman Demar, working as assistant professor in Department of Mechanical Engineering, St. Thomas Institute for Science and Technology, Toronto. Good morning, everybody. I am Dr. Santosh Kumar. <coughs> I have been uh, formerly head of the Department of Physics in University College, Toronto. Good morning, myself, Vinod from Kansargod LBS Engineering College, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering Department. Thank you. Thank you, all dear participants. Now it's time for the keynote address by Dr. Anup Kumar Srivastava, Director of Faculty Development for AICT New Delhi. Uh, actually, he took PhD in public administration uh, from Lucknow University, and he worked as trainee academic associate in the Institute of Management IIM Ahmedabad, and also worked as research associate in the Institute of Management IIM Lucknow, and uh, assistant regional director uh, from in Indira Gandhi National Open University, and also as program coordinator, School of Good Governance and uh, Policy Analysis. And he has experience with a demonstrated history of working in the education management. And skilled government, dual development, organizational development, research, and e government, and strong administrative professional with a PhD focused in public administration. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good morning to one and all. Respected Honorable Vice Chancellor, DUK, Distilled University, Kerala. Honorable Member Secretary, ICT Professor Rajiv Kumar, sir. Our coordinator from the UK, uh, Professor L.J. Abit, uh, Professor Achyu Sarkar, sir. And all the distinguished teachers who are part of the Today Orientation Program for the translators and reviewers in the Malayalam language. It's really a great honor and privilege for all of us that the UK has come forward to associate with the ICT for the translations work. Since last uh, around nine months, uh, uh, we are searching for the partners, for the collaborators uh, to start the work in Malayalam language. Because as we all know that with the national education policy in 2020, the most of the focus of the policy is on the mother tongue. So especially up to the fifth standard, the education need to be imparted by the various state in the mother tongue only. And subsequently also last year, the IICT took the decision to start the engineering education in the various Indian languages. So uh, around some of the states have come forward to start the education, and uh, especially in the Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, uh, in the uh, West Bengal. 
So around six to seven states come forward to start the engineering education in the regional languages. So one of the most important question which comes to the mind of the various stakeholders is that where is the material? Where are the books uh, which need to be given to the students, especially when they are opting for the engineering education in the uh, various Indian languages? So in alignment with the NEP, AICT has started the technical book writing scheme last year. And we have uh, taken around 20 courses, 11 at the diploma and 9 at the degree level. And subsequently, uh, we have involved the renowned authors to write these books in the first year. And uh, these books have been translated into nine Indian languages. So already, uh, we have trans completed the translation work in the Marathi, Hindi, Bengali, Telugu, Tamil, Gujarati, Kannada, Punjabi, Uriya. And three more languages we have just started, one is the Assami, Urdu, and Malayali. So, uh, I hope that in the next two or three months, we will be able to complete the first year assignment. But the biggest task with all of us is the second year assignment. In the second year, there are very large volume of books. There are 88 courses. So, uh, 42 at the degree level and 46 at the diploma. So, already uh, for the English writing, we have organized the orientation program for the original authors. Uh, mostly this year for the UG level, the most of the authors from the IITs and the NITs also. So, those authors had already started the English book writing and most of the authors have submitted two chapters, three chapters and four chapters. So, in general, the books consist of uh, maybe five to eight chapters for the units. So, we are going to complete the English assignment, English book writing for the second year also by the end of the October itself. So, the next, the biggest responsibility is coming to the university and the madam also, to all of you also to translate those second year books in the Malayalam language because uh, there are broadly five major disciplines like uh, electrical, electronics, civil, mechanical and computer science in which we are working upon. And uh, in these broad disciplines, uh, we have uh, focused so as to provide the basic uh, this engineering material in the in these disciplines. If you look into the scenario of the second year also, second year, uh, there are large number of states come forward to provide uh, as compared to the last year. So, around uh, 4,000 engineering admissions are in process for the regional languages also. And this year, we are focusing on all the 12 languages simultaneously. So, I hope that by the end of the maybe January and the February, we will be able to complete the second year assignments. Uh, AICT has very ambitious budget for this initiative to around 19 crores uh, across the country. We are spending on the translations. So it involves the original book writing as well as the translations. Uh, so uh, I believe that most of the uh, our media and etc. things have been communicated by the coordinator to uh, all of you. And the as per the OICT data, there are 11 states, Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, West Bengal, and Gujarat. So these states are uh, offering the courses in the various Indian languages. And there are 39 institutions across India. The seven languages which we are there covering is Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, Telugu, Kannada, Tamil, and Tamil. And one of the most important is that there are nine engineering disciplines like biomedical engineering, civil engineering, computer science and engineering, electrical, electronics and communication engineering, IT, mechanical, architecture, and interior designing. So these are the nine disciplines which are going to offer in the, these Indian languages. One of the important aspects which uh, Professor Achyu Saraj also highlighted is that it's not about I mean, just going into in a particular language only, but at the same time, all these materials, whatever the work which all of you will do, will help the English medium student also to understand the concept. It's not about that, that particular language only, that the students who are going to opt in the Malayali language, they will be uh, helpful. I mean, these study material will be helpful to them, but at the same time, it will also help your own students, wherever you are teaching, wherever you are part of the institutions, you may, uh, I mean, it will facilitate your own student to understand the concept in their own mother tongue. So our broader aim to provide a better understanding, especially in the terms of the government of India, focus on the startups, you know, innovations, etc. Uh, recently, we have also conducted the Smart India Hackathon, where the large number of institutions across India participated. So, our basic aim is to 
uh, involve the students in their own thinking to move towards the innovations in uh, that particular direction. So this is the big uh, objective which all of us are taking uh, uh, so as to so strengthen the engineering education and other aspects. So with this, uh, I request all of you uh, to kindly, uh, although it is a very small time which we are giving, but I hope that the tool and other things which uh, the IIT Bombay people are going to demonstrate will help you a lot in doing the translation work. So, in the subsequent sessions uh, on the different aspects of translation, and most of the things I believe that whatever the professor achieved, we are also following. So, whatever is uh, informed us about the use of the English language in the similar line, the city is following because for us, in order to provide the better understanding to our student, the mixed use of the regional languages, Indian languages, along with the English terminology is essential. So, we are also following the same pattern. So, I believe that the subsequent sessions, especially the hands on training, we are also uh, bringing one chapters of each and every course which has been allotted to you for the hands on experience so that uh, here only you will go uh, in maybe one or two pages translation. And all of us uh, from the your own other teachers who are sitting in this hall, all of us could assess and assess and judge each other so that I mean collectively we can work upon a better translation. One of the aspect uh, which I also request all of you, so whenever you go for the translation, please uh, also show the translated version to your own students because it's going to help you a lot because ultimately the students are going to be benefited uh, whatever the work you do. So please do share the copy of the translation with them so that whatever their suggestions, these could be incorporated before finally submitting the units to the uh, coordinator madam or onward transmission to the AICT. So with this, I again thanks all of you for coming over here to be part of this orientation program, to be associated with AICT and DUK, uh, to be part of the longer journey to build a stronger country towards the providing education in the mother tongue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. for your address. Now I invite uh, Professor Rajiv Kumar, Honorable Member Secretary, AICT in Delhi. Uh, actually, he is a professor, Rajiv Kumar, uh, with his M.E. in Computer Technology and Application from Delhi College of Engineering and PhD from IIT Delhi. After completing PhD, he joined BCR University of Science and Technology, Haryana, Haryana in the year 1990. His areas of research interest are mathematical computing, software engineering, and image processing. And he has published a number of research papers in national and international journals and presented papers in India and abroad. He has visited several universities in USA, Canada, China, and Malaysia. I welcome you, sir. You join the online platform. Welcome you, sir. Uh, good morning, or or. Uh... Our uh, honorable member secretary is likely to join soon. So uh, we'll have to, uh, I think uh, we can continue and uh, once he joins, uh, he can begin. He on, he on, on, on. And then, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Good morning, all. I uh, hope I'm audible. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Am I yes, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you. In fact, our Honorable Member Secretary will join us very soon. So kindly bear with us for a minute.
Yeah, one minute. Great to have I invite our honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Sajid Gobhmad, for the presentation address. Good morning. Uh, Professor Rajesh Chandra uh, Nair, uh, Dr. Amit Kumar Srivastava, who is joining us uh, from uh, ACT Delhi, Professor Rajiv Kumar, Honorable Member Secretary, ACT, Professor Ensemble Shirley, the coordinator and uh, senior professor at uh, DUK, and uh, dear uh, participants for this uh, workshop. At the outset, uh, let me so extend a very warm welcome to all of you uh, to Digital University and this uh, project, which we believe is a very important milestone uh, for not only for the university, but also for the technical education in the state itself. My apologies for not joining earlier. I was unfortunately in a, stuck in a class, which I was delayed. But we are very, very happy to see the, the overwhelming response we got from users, faculty members across the state for this project, which ACT has initiated recently for translating uh, the textbooks to the local language, the vernacular in this case, Malayalam. As we know that if you look at uh, Almost all global players in the world, education happens in the vernacular medium. Be it is Japan, be it in China, be it in Germany, be it in France. It always happens, and even Russia, for example. All of them, actually, it happened in their vernacular languages, the local languages, national languages. But somehow we were actually uh, uh, laggard in that space, uh, especially when it comes to technical education and technical books. We still don't have all our, most of our obligations, not only in English. This actually put a limitation because uh, we used to say that when you think about computing, if you look at Chinese computing, the Chinese computing actually happens in Chinese language. But we still don't have uh, pure Hindi computing or pure Malayalam computing or pure Tamil computing. We may have the scripts, but we still don't have the thought process translating into the action. The same case is in other technical domains also. I believe that this is a great uh, initiative which uh, ACT has uh, taken up, and uh, we are extremely privileged that we can associate with ACT on this noble mission of uh, creating uh, vernacular content, which can actually make education much more uh, democratic, inclusive, and uh, available to all the uh, participants uh, from various domains who learn their. Uh, 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 their thought process is many times in the in the normal the mother tongue, and when you get into the technical education, that actually continues for that. And uh, I I understand there is a very structured process in which uh, this translation is going to happen, and uh, we have a very tight deadline of three months to complete this work. And with support of all of you, we hope that we will be able to complete that very effectively. Uh, I don't want to extend it. We have guests from Delhi who are. Uh, uh, waiting, uh, they will they will actually give you uh, insights on the this, this very ambitious project which which ACT has taken up to convert technical education into multiple languages. And once again, we thank ACT for giving digital universities opportunity, and or thank each of you for uh, volunteering coming forward to this very ambitious task of nation building where we make our country also a very strong super powerhouse in technology by making sure that the technical education reaches each and every nook and corner of the country. Thank you very much and let's hope that we will have a very long journey together where we'll have a very meaningful uh, association with each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your warm address. Now I invite Professor Rajiv Kumar, Honorable Member Secretary of ACT Delhi, to the special address. Good morning. First of all, from, on behalf of AICT, I thank Digital University Kerala for accepting our 
request for taking this important task of translating first year engineering books in Malayalam language. Honorable Vice Chancellor of the University, Dr. Saji Gopinath, Professor Achut Shankar Nayar, my friend, Dr. A.K. Srivastava, other dignitaries and translators, those who are present in this uh, workshop, which we call as the orientation program. And now I want to inform that we have almost completed and published the books in other Indian languages and probably the Malayalam is the last one. We could not find the translator. So we, we could start this uh, uh, exercise late. But now we expect that the work of this first year books, although the deadline is three months, but we are expecting that the commitment, type of commitment, type of devotion shown by the Kerala Digital Kerala University, we will be able to finish this work even, even in one month, uh, one and a half month. So I will request my colleague, Dr. Srivastava, please shorten this deadline so that we can publish this book in, in two months, not in three months. So this is my one request. You may have many more things in your mind which you want to clarify. That's why Dr. Srivastava is with you. You take whatever you, uh, uh, confusion you have in your mind regarding it is payment, regarding how the work will progress, how you will take the things with the original author, all such things Dr. Srivastava will explain you. He will be there with you for the whole day. I think this type of orientation workshop will help in concluding or in finishing this task as early as possible. And I, from the AICT part, uh, side, I assure you all help, whether it is regarding the payment to our esteemed translator, translators, whatever contribution goes to the university, we will assure that it will be, it will reach you well in time. And the, even the larger work is awaiting once you finish this work, we are in the process of completing 88 books of the second year also. This work is also simultaneously going on. Dr. Srivastava will explain that thing also. As early as possible, if we are able to finish this task, we will immediately switch over to the second year books. So this uh, contents of second year books are also going to be ready by that time. So it's a it's a very important task and I know the quantum of the work involved also. We, but one thing we need that, whatever you do, it should have perfection. Anybody knowing the Malayalam language must say that who has translated this book, they should see the immediately by looking at the book, he should immediately go to the page where the name of the translator is written. So this is, I am expecting, that the quality of the translation from all these uh, translators and with all good wishes, I once again thank all of you for being part of this important task of the Government of India. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir, for an inspiring address. Now I invite Honorable Vice Chancellor for, an, uh, for giving this moment as a talking flag to Dr. Anand Kumas. Thank you, sir. Now I invite our research officer, Dr. Nandu, for the concluding session. Good morning to all. Digital University is for creating a responsible digital world. A digital world for our people, our planet, our prosperity, for our peace and partnership. Today, our university is trying to attain another milestone by coordinating this technical translation scheme as part of implementation of National Education Policy 2020. It has been such an honor to be part of this wonderful attempt, translation of technical books in Malayalam language along with AICT. I wish this translation 
translation effort will help our students to understand technical subjects more clearly and they can attain more knowledge which could help them to be more creative and productive in technology. On behalf of Kerala University of Digital Sciences, Innovation and Technology, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed guest, Professor Achishankar Nayar, Professor and Head, Department of Computation and Biology and Bioinformatics for inaugural, inaugurating this event. We are really enlightened with your inaugural address. Thank you, Dr. Amit Kumar Srivastava, Director, Faculty Development Cell, AICT New Delhi, for his keynote address and being here with us today. Thank you, Professor Rajiv Kumar, sir, Honorable Director, Faculty Development Cell, AICT New Delhi, for his keynote address and being here for his special address. Now, uh, so I would like to thank Professor Sajid Gobinand, our University Vice Chancellor, for his unlimited support and mentoring. Professor Elizabeth Shelley gave remarkable efforts while coordinating these activities. Thank you, ma'am, for your support. I extend my gratitude to AACT for funding and giving us the opportunity to coordinate this trans translation scheme on our heartfelt Thanks to all translators and reviewers for being a part of this joint effort. Thank you all. A special thanks to members of Center for Excellence in Brain Computing and the Virtual Resource Center for Language Computing for coordinating this event. Thank you all, teaching and non teaching staff of the UK. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nalo. Today, the September 20, September 15th, the country celebrates the Children's Day to appreciate the contribution of engineers. Actually, engineers play a crucial role in the development of a nation. So, in this special occasion, I wish all the engineers a happy Engineers Day. With this, we have uh, come to the end of this uh, inaugural ceremony. It is arranged in outside. You can have it, and uh, the session will continue after that. Thank you. Uh, respected uh, dignitaries from AICT Delhi, the inaugural session is over, sir. The technical session will commence after.